Hello! Welcome to Sound and Fairy Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Bloody Rose by Nicholas Eames, which is a 2018 fantasy novel from Orbit. I will admit that I did not read the first book in the series, I guess. Like, I, it's not really a series in that there are characters that reappear, but it's not like it's a continuation of the series. Anyway, I didn't read Kings of the Wild as honestly it didn't appeal to me that much. Middle-aged crisis stories don't really draw me in. But I saw this one on Audible and it sounded kind of more up my alley, more people I could identify with. <laughs> so uh, I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Bloody Rose is both a quest-fueled sword and sorcery novel and a bit of a riff on music culture. It's a rollicking tale that is funny, action-packed, and fun, but suffers a bit from pacing and some characterization issues. <laughs> so what's it about? Live fast, die young. Tam Hashford is tired of working at her local pub, slinging drinks for world-famous mercenaries, and listening to the bards sing adventure and glory in the world beyond her sleepy hometown. When the biggest mercenary band of all rolls into town, led by the famous Bloody Rose, Tam jumps at the chance to sign on as their bard. It's the adventure she wants, an adventure she gets as the new crew as the crew embark on a quest that will end in one of two ways, glory or death. It's time to take a walk on the wild side. Okay. Normally big chunky books don't bother me, but oh man, is this one bloody long. <laughs> this could be because I listen to it on audiobook and I don't get more than like 40 minutes max at a time to listen to something, so that was a lot of sessions in one story. The narrator did a fantastic job though. I would listen to a, a audiobook by her again because her voices and intonation were excellent. I really liked kind of her take on the story. <laughs> In terms of the book itself, Tam is a likable main character as she's young, as we all were once, naive but not stupid and eager but not arrogant. She's well balanced but her arc is rather obvious. You know, hers is a coming of age story through and through. You kind of understand like where she starts from and where she's gonna end up. <laughs> the other characters were all right but I never really grew to love them. Usually I'd be all over myself for characters like Kira and Rose but I felt at a distance from them. This is a book where everyone seems to have a side quest to delve into their character which helped round them out and while well, I like a good side quest, these quests felt more like backstory to me than rather than growth stories. And Bloody Rose never loses her baggage. The entire story for her is predicated on a woman trying to live up to her father and be her own person, but in the end she never really learns to escape that. In the end she's just fighting again for her father. It's like a piece of a puzzle was missing in the story at the end. In truth, the entire climax of the novel, while not feeling entirely like tacked on, didn't do much for me. The main villain wasn't compelling or interesting, as she was a very classic fantasy antagonist with a typical goal. There was nothing kind of new there that made me be like, wow, I was just kind of like, okay. <laughs> The monsters in the book were there mainly to kill and pass by. It does delve into the topic of othering and dehumanizing typically aggressive or evil fantasy creatures based on appearance or misconceptions, but that doesn't really pan into something. Aside from a very human passing creature who's part of the main crew, there isn't really a monster in the book who gets a story. It felt like this idea, the, you know, feeling bad for the monsters they're pitted against in like the arenas where they fight. It was only brought up to include a specific aspect of the final battle. Perhaps it was more like too much was happening in the book and this got kind of pushed aside. And for a book this big, I'm not really sure how that happened. It just, it felt like there was such potential there to like say something important, but it kind of was like glossed over. So there is a great deal of humor in the book, more so in the first half and the last. And it's more kind of in terms of like narrative terms of phrase than dialogue because the band didn't have that kind of rapport or camaraderie in a way that we see in say Dragonlance even or Joe Abercrombie or even like Malazan. They felt more like people traveling together rather than a cohesive unit. I think this is because oftentimes in down aside from when they're fighting the only time they kind of hang out as a group and like talk is when they're drinking so there's no like banter in the book i didn't really get the depth of one of the relationships between one of the couples i didn't really get the attraction between another one it felt very surface level I will say though that the novel is refreshingly LGBTQ plus friendly for fantasy, which is still, you know, getting there, at least traditionally published fantasy, with Tam being a lesbian and other characters being queer as well and it being normalized in society. Often in fantasy, I mean less so in self-published fantasy, but traditional fantasy for sure, we get queer characters but society usually doesn't accept them. It was great to see a fantasy world where being gay was not vilified or a secret. That was really nice. <laughs> 
In terms of the action scenes, the battles were fun, though some of them were a little long, like the final battle just kind of went on and on. There wasn't a lot of tension because it felt like no one was really in any danger of dying, at least anyone who was a main character or anyone I really cared about. But then again, I didn't really care about any of the characters that much. Oh, it's, it's so weird because while I was listening to the book, I enjoyed it. It was fine. I liked listening to it. It could be just because the narrator did such a good job, but I wasn't like loving it, you know, like I wasn't like a lot of the time with audiobooks, especially near the end, I'm like, okay, you know, it's Thursday night instead of reading or writing, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to play a video game like Minecraft or something. And I'm going to listen to my audiobook because I want to find out how it ends. I'm like super into it. But this one, I was just kind of like, okay, doing the dishes, might as well listen to it. I'm like, oh, okay, there's another two hours left. I might as well get through this. You know, um, I already got this far. <laughs> so I will say overall, it's not a five star read for me, but I did enjoy it, I guess. I don't know. It's so weird because it's like one of those books that upon reflection, I didn't like it as much as I thought I did. <laughs> I feel kind of bad. I don't like giving bad reviews. I wouldn't say this is a bad review. I think a lot of people, I think a certain type of reader will really like this book. It feels almost like a lit RPG book at times. So if you're into that, I think you might like it. If you're really into like sword and sorcery, kind of basic sword and sorcery novels, I think you would like it. I just, I guess the book was just a bit basic for me. I've been spoiled with all these self-published fantasies that are so unique and interesting. And I mean, there are some really great traditionally published fantasy. Um, I'm trying to think, well, like, you know, N.K. Jemisin for one, uh, like the fifth season. I mean, there's tons. I just recently, I think I've been reading a lot of self-published fantasy and I'm just finding it so refreshing. So I guess, maybe that's it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to be reading Kings of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure let me know in the comics if you read this book and you really liked it and yeah I don't know I don't know what's going on with this book for me I don't know that was a long audiobook too it was like 24 hours of audiobook that's a long time maybe that was it maybe it was just like fatigue anyway this is going on too long and um I'm done thanks bye <laughs>